Well, hello there, everybody. It's Agrippa Maxenius again, and I'm going to show you some of the great things that Warfare has to offer in Sovereignty Crown of Kings. Now, as you guys can see here, your actual army is represented by the symbol of your particular faction. In this case, we are playing as Dragonhold. This is a human faction, and we are this little dragon over here. Now, currently, I've gotten myself trapped behind Iron Barony lines, and it's time to go ahead and engage them in combat and see if I can't win. Now, the way we do that is we go ahead and select our army, and we attack this area. Now, I want to point out that you can always buy new units for your army in this screen. Sometimes you need to trade for new units, you need to trade resources, but that's for another video. Now, once you have your units selected, you may also take note of the fact that sometimes you get a general card, or a warlord card in this case. Now, this warlord card actually gives all standard units we control the ability to reset their attack once per turn. These cards are very, very valuable, and they really can turn the tide of a battle for you. What we're going to do here is go ahead and select the enemy troop, or the enemy army, uh, and we are going to attack this province. As you guys can see, it shows us the Iron Barony's army, and as, as you can see, they do outnumber us by a small margin, uh, and it shows our army here. Now we're going to go ahead, one of the awesome things I think also about this particular system is the name of the battle on top, Dragonhold Attacks Iron Barony at Raker Way, and this will be called the Battle of Raker's Way. So of course we could auto-resolve this, make it very simple, and generally if you auto-resolve and you have more men than the enemy, there's a good chance you'll win. In this case, this would be very 50-50 and more than likely the enemy would win, so we're going to go ahead and go for the tactical approach. So let's see what happens when we hit that tactical button. As you can see, we now zoom into the actual battle screen area, and this is where things get really interesting. Now obviously there's a battle phase where you can actually set up your army in a particular way. Now, I kind of like the way these guys are set up now, but I must admit that it would probably be good to have them actually next to each other. As you guys can see, different terrain gives you different sorts of defense bonuses. Uh, this particular area here, terrain of Sag Spike, actually gives us an attack bonus of one and a defense bonus of one. Uh, and actually just being next to each other, I believe this uh, creates a defensive bonus. I believe four units next to each other creates a defensive bonus. Don't quote me on that, but I've certainly seen it in some of my playthroughs. Uh, let's go ahead and get this battle started. And when, the way we do that is we simply end the turn and the battle commences. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't take too kindly to orcs being in my territory. So we're going to go ahead and first we're going to launch an attack on these Grum Grunts, and we'll eventually also launch an attack on the Orcish Raiders. Uh, I will first go ahead and take my Knight unit. This is actually a Dragon Knight, um, and obviously you can see that he's got the Brave trait as well as an Auxiliary trait. Uh, his melee, you can see here the casualties. Essentially, this gives you an idea of what, sh what casualties you, you can expect. We're going to kill 29 to 35 of the enemy. They're going to kill 17 to 25 of ours. I don't want to go ahead and make that attack until maybe I can get some sort of bonus here by lining my troops up. So I'm going to go ahead and continue doing this. And I will move this pikeman up. And let's see if that improves anything. Uh, still kind of the same, but now we have him trapped on several sides. So let's go ahead and launch our first attack. Boom! Okay, so actually, he lost 33, we lost 20. The unit is broken, which means that now it's definitely going to be running for the hills at some point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and attack it with my Spearman unit, my, my Spawn Tunes, actually. Um, and as you guys can see, once again, we've attacked, and once again, the unit is broken. And if you guys just take a look at the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you can see the massive amount of detail that goes into each and every attack in this game. Let's go for a finishing blow here and see if we can totally crush the enemy. As you guys can see, now our casualties are 1 to 3, because the enemy really has nothing left to fight. Um, so we'll attack, we'll go ahead, and actually take this unit. Oh, it seems we can attack. So guys, this would be a great time to have a ranged unit. In this battle, I don't. But with a ranged unit, I could have easily simply moved up, fired a ranged shot at this unit, and completely annihilated them. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and finish up with another unit of spawn tunes, and we should be able to utterly annihilate these Grum Grunts. Wonderful. There we go. They're destroyed, and we can continue moving the rest of our force up. I'm going to keep these guys very close together on this attack. I don't want anybody wavering. Uh, you could think of this as a sort of spear wall at the moment. So now we've decided that we want to go ahead and attack the enemy. I'm going to attack this unit of goblin slaves and try to get them to run. One great thing about this particular unit, for me at least, is that they are a craven, which means that if they think they're taking too much damage, they're going to go ahead and retreat like they just did there. We're going to go ahead and actually continue trying to attack them. I'm going to send a squad of men this way and I send a squad of men to the north to face the rest of these orcish forces. And this is something that you 
you will really want to be want to be doing in the game is trying to separate your forces, but don't separate them too much because you're going to get completely overrun if you do, especially in a larger battle like this one. Um, and actually, this is more just a medium-sized battle because you can have double the amount of forces on both sides in a battle um, than what we're showing here. Now, strongholds are very important. If we can take this, we're going to have a lot more control over the area. Our troops are going to get a bonus. That's something we really want. So we're going straight for that. Let's go ahead and end our turn. Now, at any point, we can go ahead and actually use our Warlord's trait, but we can only use it once, and that actually gives us another turn to attack. I don't want to use that until we absolutely have to. Once we can use it, I will go ahead and take that extra turn, and that will probably help us to secure uh, quite a lot of victories here. So as you guys can see, we got 14 gold just from taking this capital, and it's going to really benefit our forces overall. Uh, I'm not going to put too many troops into chasing this goblin slave unit because it's really not a very uh, high value unit to begin with. So we're really going to focus on these units in the center. Let's move these troops up, have them right next to each other when they engage in battle. We'll go ahead and get this guy here, this guy here, and we'll put our spontoon unit up here on this particular mountain. So I'm going to go ahead and attack here. Boom. Boom. And at this point, we can go ahead and employ our hero ability. So let's go ahead and click our warlord. And as you can see, now our troops can attack once again. Attack once again. And we can probably destroy that unit entirely. Now, one bad thing about the ability to attack once again is it doesn't give you the ability to keep moving once again. So you have to make sure that you're very, very close to enemy units before you cast this particular ability. Uh, and then it's going to be a lot more effective. Keep in mind that there are various different warlords for various different factions and they all have a ton of different abilities so at this point i want to keep taking strongholds as you guys can probably imagine taking a stronghold is going to keep increasing our odds of winning uh, even if it's a small stronghold like this of course this is a capital uh, this might just be a regular city we're going to go ahead we're charging with everything we have just making sure that we can take this area now unfortunately we can't take it this turn but next turn we should have no problem and once again we wiped out another unit and look at that wow we're going to be able to take rakers away and uh, we will continue moving forward. Now, I'm not too concerned about the goblin slaves like I told you before. We do probably want to go ahead and finish them off so we don't have to worry about them in the future. Uh, so I will assign one or two units to wrap those guys up and kick them out of this battle once and for all. Now, at this point, the battle actually seems like more of a mopping up operation. I'm actually trying to go ahead and defeat the enemy, and despite being outnumbered, we do seem to put the enemy in a pretty good position at the moment. We're really keeping them on the ropes, and we're continuing to move up their particular territory to their other cities. I really do have a good feeling about this battle, but let's see if it actually plays out. Now guys, I want you to pay attention to something really cool that happens here once we end the turn, and this is because of the formation we're in. So let's go ahead, we're going to end our turn. Did you see those shields pop up, these double shields? This lets us know that we're actually getting a defensive bonus for being so clustered together like this. So if any enemy were to attack us, it would probably be a very bad idea on their part. But let's go ahead and finish up the rest of these guys. Of course, I'm very worried about the scavengers. Just kidding. As you can see, their only trait is being craven. They're not the best troops at all. So we can go ahead and just keep finishing these guys off little by little. Now, it does look like the orcs have some pretty good mounted units here, wolf riders. And they're very, very good. As you can see, we're going to have a lot of casualties just fighting these guys. But honestly, I think it's worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish them off. Or at least try to. I'm hoping the spontoons will actually give us a bonus against these guys since they are sort of spearmen unit. Uh, let's bring up this unit of spontoons and attack once again. And as you can see, our health for all of these units has been greatly reduced because of those attacks. But you got to do what you got to do sometimes. And in this case, we need to destroy the enemy troops. There we go. We got rid of those wolf riders. Won't be having to worry about those again for this particular battle. We've gone ahead and pushed through these orcish lines, guys. And now we really just need to take this final area. Once we take this, we should be able to win the battle fairly easily. We still want to go ahead and go for this city, of course, and plant down the wonderful flag of Dragonhold before the battle ends. But for now, our main goal is mopping up the rest of the enemy forces. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. The end turn button. 
see if the enemy has any tricks for us. I doubt they do, but as you can see, they're getting a defensive bonus over here by standing next to each other, which may make it a little harder for us to displace these guys. Although, to be honest, I'm not worried, because we're about to totally crush the enemy here without even taking a single casualty. Let's go ahead and take this capital. Once again, we raise the mighty flag of Dragonhold above it and make sure that the orcs know that this is not their land anymore. It now belongs to us. Uh, and let's go ahead and start attacking the main orc stronghold here. As you can see, these orcish raiders are putting up a pretty good fight, but not enough to hold this stronghold forever. So let's take advantage of that. We'll move in here, and we may even be able to finish them off entirely. All right. Beautiful. We've captured the main capital, guys, and now that we control all of the cities, the battle is won. Of course, the enemy could still try to kill our units, but at this point, I think we can both see that it's very, very clear that that's simply not going to happen. So there we go, guys. Dragonhold captures Raker's Way from Iron Barony. And the wonderful part about this screen is it really allows you to see the casualties of each army. As you can see, the skull represents that this particular army was completely destroyed. It looks like they still have three units that managed to escape but we have to keep in mind that some of our units are actually also hurt and it does take a few turns for them to recuperate their health so here's a really cool thing that has just happened guys at the end of our battle and this only happens when you win a battle or when you do particularly well we have a hero that has become legendary and this is of course our warlord uh, now we get to actually choose a new skill that he can use in battle so he will have two skills in battle now ancestral glory is when fighting in any province you owned at at the start of the game all units you own heal fully and then gain plus two attack, plus two defense, and brave for the remainder of combat. That's pretty awesome. In Valor, all units you own heal ten life and gain brave for the remainder of the battle. I must say, Ancestral Glory is probably a much better skill here, but I'm going to go ahead and take Valor. I'm just a Valor kind of guy, I guess. What can I say? Um, we also got a unit promotion for one of our wonderful Dragon Knights, and that means we can go ahead and actually increase one of the abilities. Now I'm going to attack the Orc Slayer ability, so when we get into battle with Orcs, we will always be able to fight them and do a good job, uh, get that plus to attack bonus, and since we're in Orcish territory anyway in the Iron Barony, I figure that's probably a good skill. So at the end of that battle, guys, we have crushed an army of the Iron Barony, and now we are in this territory. Now, thankfully, the border shows us that this territory was already part of Dragonhold. In fact, I took it a little bit earlier. Uh, but now we don't have any Iron Barony armies that are in this area, so they can't take it back from us. If we want to go ahead and launch an offensive attack, we can go ahead and do the same thing we just did. And if we stay in this particular province for a few turns and are not attacked, it will once again become part of Dragonhold. I hope this answers some of your questions about combat in the game of Sovereignty, guys. I hope it's exciting, and I hope it's something you would like to see more of in the future. As you can see, there are a number of different units we can get, and these are just units that you can see now. Your input is going to really help us increase the amount of unit cards, increase the different amount of types of units, uh, etc. And obviously, as you gain more territory, you gain more units as well.